Hey guys, how can you realistically place a 3D object into a 2D environment? Do you want to know? Let's find out. If you want to have a convincing CGI and 2D photo hybrid, as I would call it, you will have to concentrate on blending these two worlds together in a very realistic way. And for that, you have to have the right reflections in your 3D product or object. If it comes to diffuse objects, it might be enough if you extract the environment from your PSD file and take it into your 3D application and throw it onto your object as an HDRI map. That might be okay for rough things like stones, rubber, or anything like that that is not very reflective. However, when it comes to glossy objects, you will completely see that it's fake because it is not reflecting the right light information that comes from your PSD file. So how can you solve that? I was facing this challenge a while ago in a client's job for a big food corporation in Europe and they wanted me to create an environment for one of their wine bottles. And I did that and they were like very happy, but they gave me the feedback that somehow it does not fit in or does not blend in realistically because the environment of the bottle is not showing in the reflections of the bottle. And so I had to fix that. And I was thinking about it, how can I come up with a good solution? Because the PSD file is actually a flat plane. And if you put this into a 3D scene, you will not really be able to create realistic reflections if you don't know how. So the thing is that all the parts that are in front of the bottle have to be in front of the bottle in virtual space and everything that is behind the bottle has also to be behind the bottle in order to give kind of right reflections. And I want to show you the process of that. So I would say let's get into Photoshop at first and I want to explain to you how I set up the file and how I exported layers in order to have a new, like in order to create my environment in, in Blender this time. But I think you can apply this also to other 3D applications. Okay, so let's get over to Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. And as you see, I have my file, I have all my layers, it's quite a lot of them. And if I show you, for example, if I uncheck the foreground, you can see that all this all these plants are going away and there's also some light leaks in it there is like the ground in it the wine bottle itself of course and all these things so what is the challenge we want to have these kind of things reflecting in this part of this bottle it's not happening now and so it somehow looks strange and it's not really fitting into the whole composition the technique that i used is that i tried to rebuild this environment in a kind of a rough way in Blender and after that I used the camera projection in order to throw the image onto that environment. Let me show how I did this. Um, at first I will want to deactivate the foreground and also the wine bottle and also these casks. So I'm left with this. This is enough for starters. And what I will do now is I will export this very scene as it is now. We call this environment. All right, I have exported it. And now let me hop over to Blender. This is my file. Here you see the wine bottle in it. And except for the wine bottle, there is actually nothing in it. So let me quickly produce a light setup with the advanced light maps. Something like that, nothing too complicated, just to have uh, some reference. So nice, looks very good. Okay, this light setup, I put this into a to a group lights i can take them out if i want to but looks cool right yeah i like it by the way the advanced light maps are for sale okay <laughs> anyway i don't want to sell you anything you know like nothing i mean like what will i want to sell you nothing okay let's now put our environment into the scene that we just exported from photoshop and i use the images and X as planes import and i choose my environment and make it big and there it should appear in a second oh, illegal address cuda thank you for messing me up so i choose the cpu takes a bit longer but that's okay 
So here we have our environment and I will put it behind the model and peek through the camera and it almost looks like we had in Photoshop. If I zoom in, you can see that the reflection is not really working as it is supposed to be because of course this is just a flat plane behind our bottle that is not working we need the reflections coming from this side and from that side as well so how can we achieve this i will put a cylinder into the scene scale it up a bit turn it around by 90 degrees and i will delete the top of it and i make it even bigger so we have a representation of the cask around our bottle. Maybe like that, that should do it. Okay, and now we have to apply the environment material onto our cylinder. So let's do it. I create a new material. I create a image texture, connect this to the base color, and I will choose our environment as the image texture. Let's put the color output also into the emission input to make it glow and shine. And that looks <laughs> almost okay because the projection type is not right. So let's change the texture coordinate output from UV to, uh, to window. And here you go. A very beautiful reflection of the wood. Okay, let me, maybe you could tweak it a little bit more. Maybe um, I will take out this environment image. And yeah, I think I'm good to go with this one. So I have a bit of the reflection from the, from the background in here. You see the fields and the, the clouds. And I have the realistic reflection of the cask in there. And that is actually everything I wanted. I don't want to have these glitches in there and I will have to um, mask this thing out in the end in Photoshop because I don't want to have this, this break in there. So I will shift this a bit to the back, make it a bit smaller on the, on the Y axis like that. All right, so that's the first part of it. Um, I will now render it out and put it over to Photoshop. For that, I will blend out the cylinder. So I don't want to have it in my camera view. Yeah, and I will reduce the emission back to one. That's better. Okay, that's very good. All right, so let's render it. And when I'm done, I will put it over to Photoshop. And by rendering, you might as well eat a what is it called in English? This thing? What is it called? Mandarina. Let me check this on Google Translator because I have time. A tangerine? Really? Mandarin? Uh, okay, this is a tangerine. A, a tangerine? Tangerine. Uh, I, I just learned this. <laughs> and now I will eat this. Mmm. Mmm. Ah, absolutely fantastic. I mean, these tangerines. Oh, they're gorgeous. All right, mm. I'm done with rendering. No, I'm not. Okay, I continue eating. Oh. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> How do you see my 32 cores on the CPU? It's the Threadripper. It's a great mission. But nonetheless, I, I'd rather go with the GPU, to be honest. Anyway, so I'm done with rendering. I'm pretty good at naming. I always simply call this one. All right, so then let's get back to Photoshop. And now let's put in image that we just rendered. So I guess we're good to go with this one. Perfect, okay. So we take this and now simply change the blending mode to screen. And I mean, we are almost there, you see. This is what I would call a realistic reflection of a 3D product in a 2D scene. Um, of course, I will have to mask it out. Um, let me do it. I will choose my path. I will apply a mask. And I will also create a curve on it in order to increase the contrast a bit.
Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. And I will put this in a group and I will create another mask. And now I will start to... Oops. Start to... Uh, what will I start to do? Man. Switching from iMac to Windows always a challenge for me. So now... Nah, now I have it. Need over it a bit and invert my mask so I only have my reflection going. But I can delete everything that is in the middle because I don't need it. But this... I would consider this a big improvement. Now you might wonder, how has he created this, um, this wine reflex on top of it? Okay, that's much better than before, but now you might ask yourself, how has he created this interesting wine reflection on top of it that you can see in there? This is not showing right now. Yes, it is not, because uh, as you might remember, uh, we deactivated all of these layers before we exported it because I only wanted to have the reflection for the cask in the first step. The second step now would be to export these, these plants on the left and the right, these wine plants, and to have them on a separate layer and let them be reflected in the bottle as well. That is an extra step, not, as, not completely necessary, but I wanted to add this little extra bit of realism to it and I'll show you how it works because it's actually really like pretty simple. I go into my folder that I need which is the foreground folder and what I will do I will blend everything out but my foreground folder and now I will export it as a PNG file with transparent background which is important. I call it uh, wine and now I go over to blender and here I insert another images as planes, import, and I put my wine into it. I make it bigger and I will divide this. So I will divide these two planes so I can work on them separately. And now I will place them nearby the bottle. They actually are already, so I have to peek through the camera in order to see what's going on. But I guess I will have to tweak them a bit so it is looking more natural. I will place them there. And I will also, because this gives the best results in reflections, I will also create an emission shader from it and put this emission to something like three or so. And now just try to place this very near by the bottle. And I think if I place it there, might already look like something. Yeah, this one. And then we need to place the other one on the other side as well. Maybe like this. I will also uncheck the camera ray visibility so I can make sure that this is not interfering with my point of view. And now, yeah, I would say I'm good to go. I mean, it's okay, it's not, I like it. It actually looks like something. If I compare it to my image, yeah, it's almost what I had there. So the next thing would be to hit the render button again. And wait a second. So our render is finished, so we can export this over to Photoshop again, like that. And again, I put it to screen. And here we are. These are our vine plant reflections. So again, simply you would create a mask, you would mask it out in the middle like that invert the mask and then you can play with the opacity whatever you want and you have very nice very natural reflections on your bottle and that is it actually yes i know that there is much more to say about camera projections and 3d and 2d hybrids and this is only one little example of one specific case i showed you and I only scratched on the surface of this whole topic. Nonetheless, I believe that camera projection is actually the right thing to, yeah, to project your 2D environment into a 3D space, having a rough environment rebuilt and then projecting your 2D images onto it will create nice reflections and it will look much more realistic compared to 
like if you would just throw in a plane. I know that this case is very specific, but you can apply the same technique. For example, if you want to create an environment for a car, you could concentrate on the ground and the background. And depending on how realistic it has to look, you would also have to play CGI elements like trees or something like that into the scene. But all of that you can also do with your 2D trees. If you have a 2D tree, for example, a flat plane, of a tree you can place this as i did with the vine plants and so you can create kind of realistic reflections and in general it should sell i mean it's really like it depends on the case okay i just wanted to show you a general quick overview i know there's much more to say about like finding the right perspective camera matching all these stuff if you are interested in that stuff just write it into the comments i thank you for your time i thank you for watching this video please hit like and subscribe and we see each other next time. Bye. So, um, stop the recording. How can I stop the recording? I don't know. Is it that?